Alright chaps, this time I have something a little different for you. What I have in front of me is a dead Yuraku 19 inch monitor. Um, that's dead from when plugging it in and pressing the power button, nothing happened at all. Upon inspecting inside I found the two capacitors were bulging on the power board. Now I tried to replace them, however when I plugged the board back into the mains it created a fizzing sound and I decided that was a bit more dangerous to carry on with, so I went for an alternative route. Now replacing the inverter board would have cost me upward of £45, and that's money I just don't have to spend right now on frivolous things like this. So I decided to use what I had lying around, including a broken, well, an inverter board from a broken uh, TFT monitor I had in the past, and a PC power supply. So I'm classing this as more of a recycling project, using what scrap materials I have at hand to make a working screen out of what I have, rather than buying more parts to replace them just as any other person could do. So first of all, I'm going to pull apart the monitor. I should also note that when this arrived, um, it only had a couple of the screws left in the back, so it's going to be a relatively short clip. Okay, to explain how I figured out how to apply the power, I did the following. There is a header connector here. This header connects to the power board here. There is a secondary header on the original inverter board, which the manufacturer kindly labelled for people like me. Using a multimeter, I traced pins back to four on the, on the logic board. Two for five volts and two for ground, as outlined here. From here it was simply a matter of connecting the power supply pins for ground and fire volts to the correct pins to correctly power the logic board. I then researched the inverter board I had going spare and found that it had a standard 6 pin inverter board plug. Most generic inverter boards run at 12 volts, um, so I found the positive and ground ends and tested them with my uh, multimeter. I also realised that in, in my research that uh, there is a time to live pin um, which takes up to 5 volts and alters the brightness of the monitor. This depends on how many volts are put into it. I've got to point out that when I was figuring out these pins, that I did test them on lower voltages and amperages first. Especially with the 5 volt pin, if you're going to attempt to do this yourself, you should put, say, 3.5 volts through it just to test to make sure that that is the correct pin, because the other pin is the on and off pin, and that can cause problems sometimes when you put too many volts into a logic chip. The last thing that I think I need to mention as far as wiring is concerned is that I was intending to put in a power switch and in the final version I have. To do this I used a motherboard connector from an old knackered motherboard and um, wired it up as follows. It basically connects the power on wire to the ground via a switch. Now the switch that I've used is out of an old PSU so it's used to carrying a large current however it doesn't really have to because it's just the power on switch and it carries a couple of amps. With all that in mind, I connected up as I mentioned in the previous clips, and this is the result. All is looking well except the autofocus. So now I can flip the switch. And now I get the disconnected signal, which means the screen is working, um, but there's no signal going to it. However, I did notice that uh, when there's no signal going to it and the power is still on, the screen sort of goes this weird shade of white. Um, the reason for this is I wired it up wrong, or I wired it up differently than it was originally anyway. So now instead of turning the lamps off when it goes into power saving mode or loses a signal, it just keeps the lamps on, regardless of whether it was actually meant to in its original design. Unfortunately I forgot to get the rebuild back on uh, camera, so uh, never mind, here is the finished product, um, processing a signal correctly from my laptop. I could go back and wire it up correctly with the correct power online coming from the logic board to the power board and such like that, but um, it's working as it is. I don't see any reason to disturb it really. It's sitting next to us displaying an image alright, except when I put it in a high resolution. Um, yeah, I think it's doing fine. So I'm just going to keep it as it is.